Okay, now it's time to finish getting the power head off. First thing I'm going to do is pull off this lower plate. You could argue to disconnect the electrical and the uh, fuel lines and everything first, but I'm not going to do that. So we got two bolts there. And we got two on the other side as well. Now, in theory, this front panel should drop down. But I may have some bolts up top too, which I'm not quite seeing. So, all right, we'll come back to that. All right, now we got to get that bolt out right there. Do that. It's a three eighths size, and I need my little extension with a swivel, of course. If I can get it on there, which I probably can't. So when I said 3 8 I was kidding. It's a uh, 7 16 All right. For some reason, that is a little too tight. One on the opposite side. Which I believe you can see. Right there. In theory. That'll come off. So now we can see the problem. There's a little bolt right there. We gotta get in there and get that out. Small one. All right, went ahead and got my long extension that doesn't suck. So I'll go back to actually doing something. Yeah, just let that hang there. Now yeah, there's one on the other side as well. Let's make the camera to stop. Perfect. Now, with any luck, you can get this out of here. I never have any luck with it. It's kind of wider than the uh, the opening is. I really don't know how you're supposed to get this thing out of there. Yep, so I'm just going to let it sit. Alright, next part. Get the power head bolts off. Three right there. I like using the uh, impact on those. Hashtag lazy. I believe they're a half inch size. Now, it's a pretty good idea to use a six point socket here. Not a 12 point, which is incredibly common. All right, got a half inch bolt, my extension and the impact. Guessing there's a water passage right under there. That's why some water's coming out. I heard this thing tank at one point. There's the first three. The next three. That one was a little stuck, but for the most part, that came out perfectly. A 
little hard to see here. But we got two more bolts right there, right there. So for the front, actually both of them. <clears throat> I didn't think the impact of reach on the front one. Apparently it did. my wrench slip off. Can't get the nut off, but it's fine. Now there's three bolts in the back of the power head. Most engines have them below, down in here. Oh, smaller engines anyway. But this don't. And no impact option, so that sucks. But get there with some crow's feet, break them loose. Personally, I do think they are easier to get to right here. My last video, I took the power head off of a, uh, not my last video, but one of my other videos, I took a power head off of a uh, 115 horse. <clears throat> you can see the struggle there. But anyway, so just get these guys off a quarter inch at a time. So on this one, the entire stud is coming off instead of the uh, bolt. Hopefully there's enough room until it'll come out. I don't think there will be. All right, those three are off. Moving on. Bolt right there, holds the lower pan on. Uh, holds the power head to the lower pan. Now we also gotta undo the electrical connector for the switch. These are old bullet splices, which apparently give me trouble. That should be it for that side. These guys are mounted to the power head adapter, so they don't need to come out just yet. And last bolt is that one right there. Now, we get everything else apart. We have a uh, fuel line here. Runs up to whatever uh, this thing does. So it connects to the motor and the fuel connector there. Runs through here, comes back, loops up there. This used to connect the VRO pump, which is already gone. So all I got to do is take it off from up here. One option is just cut it. But my pliers are easier to find than my uh, dikes. Excuse me, diagonal wire cutters. So, let's take it off there. 
And we just look for anything else that might be attached. Not really looking like it. Nope, I don't see anything. Alright, well, let's hook the chain up and get this thing off. So on the top of the power head here, I have my uh, engine puller attached. Um, I used that to put the engine on to the workbench here, and I left it on knowing I'm going to pull the power head off. Had I not have, had I have pulled the intake manifold and the ignition off first, so I just pulled the engine block, I wouldn't have had anywhere to attach a hook or anything, so that's why I like to pull the entire power head off and then take it apart. So, let me uh, zoom in here for a better look at what I'm going to be doing. If I can get one. Well, that'll kind of work. i got to use my puller tool for this. Which is a Yale, Yale three-quarter ton chain fall. Chain pull. All kinds of different names. That goes to a chain I have hanging from the ceiling. Alright, with all the bolts off, got the chain pull, pull hooked up, chain pull, come along, whatever you want to call it. Well, start going up, see what happens. Looks like it's going to come right off. You're going to have to guide it up as it comes through these back bolts. Kind of all you need to do. And as we go, anything stuck behind will make itself obvious. This case looks pretty, uh, so it came out pretty smooth there. Go ahead and show you what the pan looks like. So, if you were going to uh, fix one of these up, pull the power right off and clean this disgusting mess. This is just gross. I mean, you know, I mean, ugh, ugh. But, sorry, where are my gloves? 